Hello, Star Wars fans. Today, we're going to take a look at the question of whether or not there is a deep tie between Kamir and the Witch's Coven. And in fact, they've been giving us tons of hints that Kamir was even on Brendock 16 years ago when everything went down. We're also going to look at some amazing theories you all left in comments on the last video. So there will be lots of spoilers for episodes one through five, but as long as you're okay with that, then let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget, we have a June contest running all month long. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steelbook. And of course, this is the last day to enter that contest. And we have a membership option with lots of cool perks, so make sure to check that out in case you might be interested. All right, so we're going to look at all the ties that Kamir seems to have back to Brendock and the witches. So remember in episode two, when Osha realized, oh, it was Boonta that, from her home planet that was used to kill Torben to make the poison. Well, it was May, of course, that delivered the Bunta to Kamir. I need you to make me a poison. But look at what he said in return. Bunta? Really? So he knew what it was. He immediately knew what Bunta was, even though it's native to Brendok. That means he must have lived on Brendok. Or he wouldn't have known that, right? And he knew exactly how to make a poison out of it. Very interesting. Then, oh my goodness, what a great theory someone left on the triangle imagery. I left a comment of what, what was up with that? Why did he kill Jecky, R.I.P. Jecky, with the triangle imagery? Well, Clark Brunson, you are the man. So not only did Clark point out that Kamir was probably living on Brandock and that's how he knew about the Bunta leaf poison, but notice the last sentence he said. Also, the triangle stab on Jecky may connect with the witches too because the coven had triangles all over. And they did. I forgot all about that. Remember the notepad? I thought it was so weird. Number one, big time focus on it, right? They put a big focus. And I think what they were trying to say, oh, look, she draws images of the Jedi. And this is Osha's notepad. But there were a couple things going on here. Yes, she drew images of the Jedi, but she drew them in a triangle notepad. <laughs> like, why do you have a triangle notepad? And then there were triangles all over the place. Mother Anasea, look at her uh, jewelry piece there, double triangles. So yeah, this is just another hint the Kamir and the witches probably have a long history together. They're both really focused on that imagery for some reason. Interesting. Okay, so also in the second episode, when Kamir was approached by Osha, pretending to be May, remember? He figured it out very easily. You look exactly like her, he said. Now, granted, May surely talked about the fact she had a twin sister, but, you know, Kamir didn't know she was alive and yet immediately recognized her, meaning that they pro Kamir probably has a deep tie with both of those sisters going way back, maybe 16 years back, right? Then there's tons of things in the latest episode they showed us. A Kamir could quote unquote, get into your head, Cord says. And of course, Osha says, oh yeah, my mother could do that, get inside a Jedi's head, referring particularly to Torben, but I also think we're gonna find out to May. But yeah, this is another tie between Kamir and the witches. And then when um, uh, Kamir sees Soul, he says, Master Soul, you don't remember me? And of course, Soul says, I sense something familiar. Now, he could be talking about this scene from episode two, uh, where Kamir, uh, where they met up with Kamir, right? And Kamir playing the dunce. He was so good at that. Please, please don't do a memory wipe thing or whatever it is you guys do, right? But I don't think so. I think it goes back deeper than this. I think Soul and uh, Kamir do have a deeper history. So um, then when Soul says, what master keeps his face from his pupil? The fact that Kamir says, you tell me. You know, he's basically saying, you're the one keeping your true face from Osha. So yeah, Kamir knows a lot about what Soul did. And then also, uh, when um, Soul says, show your face, he, he retorts back with and let you read my thoughts. So this is interesting. A lot of people have said, well, is it the mask doing it? Is it something else? So I did want to point out, StarWars.com made this new article on the stranger's helmet. And notice it says, twisted metal forms a sinister smile on the cortosis helmet. So now we know it is cortosis that masks the identity of the stranger and keeps force sensitives from peering into their thoughts. Hmm, interesting. StarWars.com isn't, you know, canon per se. It's only canon, I guess, when it's in a show or a movie or whatever. But StarWars.com is about as close as you're going to get, right? So it does seem like they're saying the mask uh, does protect your thoughts from the Jedi. Hmm. Very, very interesting. All right. So then uh, I just think this whole exchange is fascinating. When Sol almost strikes Kamir when his back is turned, Kamir says, you attack me when my back is turned? Not very Jedi of you. Uh, and then finally, Sol realizes the Jedi do not attack the unarmed. Well, 
That seems like it's an indication that they did attack the unarmed, or the witches, and Kamir knows about it. That's the real key. So I think this whole thing where Kamir's been saying, kill a Jedi without using a weapon, somehow ties back to this fact that the witches had no weapons and they were attacked by the Jedi. I'm gonna bet that's where we finally learned this whole mystery behind killing a Jedi without a weapon. Uh, then he says, I have no name, but the Jedi like you might call me Sith. So he's not saying he's Sith, just that you might call me Sith. Although I do think there are some similar ties to the Sith. Because remember back in episode two, when he said the Jedi justify their galactic dominance in the name of peace and peace, and then May interrupts, I know is a lie, is a lie, I got it. Well, that of course is the beginning of the Sith creed. Peace is a lie. So if he's not Sith, he definitely follows some of the Sith practices. That much is clear. Uh, but then this is the real key. He wants the freedom to wield his power the way he likes without having to answer to Jedi like you. Because, as he explains, the Jedi say I can't exist, they see my face, they all die. And I think that's very similar to what the witches were experiencing. Because remember, it was Andara saying, we're concerned that you're training children. So basically, the Jedi were saying, you can't do that. We, the Jedi, are the only ones that can do that. So they, the witches, were constrained by the rules of the Jedi. That sounds so similar to the frustration Kamir had about being told by the Jedi what he can and can't do. And then the fact that he says to May and uh, Sol, oh, look at you two, right back where you started. That sure sounds like he knows what happened 16 years ago. And he says uh, to Osha, you trust him even after everything he did to you. I've accepted my darkness. What have you done with yours? So obviously that leads Osha to be like, well, why did he say I shouldn't trust you? He knows something Sol did 16 years ago, no doubt about it. And of course, Sol says, I'll explain. Yeah, we are, we are really waiting for that explanation. I can't wait for that. But, so, one theory that a couple people, Eduardo and G. Higgs, have thrown out is that maybe Kamir was Sol's Padawan. I think he was Sol's original Padawan, says Eduardo. G. Higgs says perhaps he was a Padawan during the raid on the witches, but was left behind. So, either he was Sol's Padawan, or maybe he was somebody else's Padawan. Interesting theory, interesting idea. I mean, there was some reason he was on uh, Brendock, that's for sure. Was he just working with the witches already, or did he come with the Jedi? And then also notice Eduardo in his first sentence starts talking about a tie with uh, Mother Coral and also Darth Plagueis. So let's talk about that a bit. Is it possible that Kamir is tied into this Sith lineage, right? You have uh, Tenebris, then uh, Pelagius, and then, of course, Sidious. And that's kind of the order that they went uh, of the most recent Sith masters. Uh, but Tenebris, what's interesting about him is he actually broke the rule of two, and he had Venomous also as uh, his apprentice, if you will. At the same time, he had Pelagius. So Tenebris himself broke the rule of two. Did he maybe break it with more than just Venomous? And is Kamir working with Tenebris? Hmm, interesting. But I love this theory. This last theory is so stinking cool. Is it possible that Kamir is tied to Abeleth? So notice the teeth. Oh my word, that is fascinating. I did not make that connection. So all the credit goes to Kanshu 6622, or 6620, who says all roads lead to Abeleth. Kamir is a dark side follower of Abeleth, hence the dark teeth mask. The coven of witches get their power from her as well. This will tie into Filoni's Ahsoka season two and the movie, and Balin is also being called by Aboleth. Just a theory. Well, Conchu, it is just a theory, but it is a darn good one. Let me know your thoughts on that. So that's why perhaps Kamir was saying, you may call me a Sith, but maybe he isn't a Sith after all. Maybe he's something different tied obviously through Abeleth and through the witches uh, and, and their magic. So let me know your thoughts. I am so excited to see where this is gonna go from here. They are laying down some very cool mysteries and the answers are gonna be in the next three episodes. That's for sure. All right, leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Also, don't forget June contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steelbook. 
And of course, there's that membership option in case you're interested in that. And I always mention the Discord. Here we are talking about uh, how Manny, who was so good as Kamir, see, that dude is jacked, but uh, some of the uh, videos that showed his training and how amazing it was. So yeah, we would love to have you on Discord. Over 1,400 members across the globe, 24-7 conversations, and you should be a part of it. I will leave a pinned comment so that you can join the Discord. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we will all eagerly await the next episode of The Acolyte.